Welcome to Bullet Point Nursing. My name is Dr. Goldstein. Let's get started. Today we are looking at oxygen administration. And let's begin with a little background. Oxygen is a prescription medication in the United States. A few points on medical terminology. Hypoxia is defined as a low level of oxygen. Hypoxemia is often used interchangeably, and it means a low level of oxygen in the blood. Hyperoxia is where there is too much oxygen, and this can be harmful in a patient. It can cause oxygen toxicity. It can also cause apnea if a patient is breathing under hypoxic drive. This will be discussed separately. Oxygen is not indicated if a patient has a pulse ox level at or above 94 or 95%. Oxygen should never be withheld from a patient in an emergency. FiO2 is fraction of inspired oxygen. And what that means is how much oxygen is there in the air. Room air oxygen has room air has an oxygen concentration of roughly 21%. This means that nearly 80% of the air that we breathe in is useless. It is not oxygen. It is not what we need or what we use. But that one fifth, that 21% that we do breathe in has all the oxygen that we need. When we administer oxygen to a patient, we are trying to increase the FiO2. This reduces the amount of air the patient needs to breathe in order to obtain the same amount of oxygen. And it increases the amount of oxygen the patient obtains with the same amount of work. Next, we have our delivery devices. And the first one we have is a nasal cannula. This is often used as a first line option for patients that need oxygen. However, this is not our go-to in a patient that's in respiratory distress. Nasal cannula will increase the FiO2 by approximately 4% per liter per minute of flow. The correct flow rate for a nasal cannula is one to six liters per minute. Nasal cannula may be used in the home setting and patients may be on it, especially for end-stage COPD. When a patient is on a nasal cannula long-term, we need to assess the skin behind the ears and in the nose to assess for any breakdown or damage. Patients will often be on humidified oxygen when they are going to be on a nasal cannula for an extended period of time. This is to prevent drying out of the mucous membrane in the nose. Another delivery device that we have is a face mask. This is not as commonly used. The flow rate for this is five to eight liters per minute. And this can achieve an FiO2 of approximately 40%. Next, we have a Venturi mask. These have the key advantage of being able to deliver a precise amount of oxygen. They use color-coded adapters to regulate the exact FiO2. These adapters must be used correctly by matching the flow rate with the adapter setting. Next, we have a non-rebreather mask, and this is the most common oxygen delivery device for a patient who is having respiratory distress. This is not used long-term. The correct flow rate for this device is 10 to 15 liters per minute. This can achieve an FiO2 of up to 100%. A non-rebreather mask has one of its components as a bag or a reservoir. This must be inflated with oxygen prior to placing the non-rebreather mask on the patient. The next delivery device that we have is a bag valve mask or a BVM. You have likely already been exposed to this in CPR training. This is used for two things, oxygenation and ventilation. These are not interchangeable terms. Oxygenation is increasing the amount of oxygen in the air and that's what we've been discussing up until this point. Ventilation is moving air in and out of the lungs. A bag valve mask is the only device thus far that does both. 
when we connect it to oxygen, it makes the air that the patient is going to be bleeding have more oxygen in it. That's called oxygenation. And by squeezing the bag when doing that properly, we are pushing air into their lungs and that is ventilation. Keep in mind for all previous oxygen delivery devices, the patient must be breathing on their own for them to work. In this case, we would be essentially breathing for the patient. A bag valve mask can also achieve an FiO2 of up to 100%. It consists of a self-inflating bag along with a reservoir. The correct flow rate for a BVM is 15 liters per minute. Some medications may be given via inhalation with oxygen. This is called uh, using a nebulizer. In this case, the medication is placed in a reservoir and becomes aerosolized by the flow of oxygen. The flow rate in this case should be six to eight liters per minute. Oxygen tubing may become detached from the wall or pop off if the flow rate is set too high. For inhaled medications, there is an option to give it via a handheld device or it can be attached to a face mask. This is discussed separately, but it can also be given in line to a patient that is on a mechanical ventilator. A few other notes about airway management. Head tilt, chin lift is a common technique that is taught to open the airway in a patient that is not breathing. The jaw thrust is an alternative method to this to be used in the patient who is not breathing that has a possible cervical spinal injury. A nasopharyngeal airway or NPA may be placed into the patient's nose to maintain an open airway. An OPA or oral pharyngeal airway may be placed into the mouth of a patient who is not breathing, again, to maintain an open airway. Finally, the gold standard of securing an airway is endotracheal intubation. This is an advanced technique that will maintain a secure airway and provide access for the patient to receive mechanical ventilation. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.